actually I was thinking about leadership and, and the best quote I could think of for this kind of situation was an old white guy called Georges Clemenceau. And he, um, the quote is often mixed up with, with Churchill and he says that um, war is too important to leave to the generals, right? We've heard that quote. And I think in many ways leadership is too important to be left to leaders, right? And so if I think about uh, the kind of um, imperative that we have um, as South Africans today, it's to seize leadership in a much more uh, meaningful way than, than the way we've, we've constructed it. So I think the challenge for South Africans is to reframe leadership, is to think differently about what that means, both in a micro way in the, in the sense that, that Roger has just pointed out. So it, so, so often we talk about leaders as though they're these sort of, if you think about leadership, it's these singular kind of ahead of the curve, um, inspirational kind of leaders. And, and I think that's a tired way of thinking about leadership. And it's also an incredibly burdensome way of thinking about leadership. I know that when I was a leader, and I thank God I am a leader of nothing but my own thoughts these days. So the, I love the thought le leader term because I don't want to be anybody's leader. Um, but when I was a leader, I think it was an incredibly lonely, uh, sort of daunting uh, um, experience because we have these overestimations about what leadership should look like and what leaders are supposed to do and all of that stuff. So from a mac micro level, I think we need to rethink and reframe the kind of leadership question and what it looks like and what it does and what a leader is supposed to be like and look like, right? Because it's largely male and so on. Uh, but I think there's also a second uh, challenge around leadership um, in South Africa, and that's to kind of leave behind the silos. And so the, even the framing of this question and this conversation that we're having is very much about sort of what does leadership look like in the private sector and what are the challenges that leaders in that sector need to look at? And what does leadership in the public sector need to look like? And what does leadership in civil society uh, need to look like? And, you know, and frankly, I think that um, continuing to think about leadership in siloed ways leads to technical approaches that don't get at the root of the kind of values that we need to inspire ourselves, that we need to aspire to as South Africans. So, so for me, I think a second reframing is to not think about leadership um, as sector specific because the crossover is important. So if I think about the people in this room, I think you know, Sonia made a point earlier today about um, you know, public state-owned enterprises and the number of people have then gone on to lead in the private sector. So that crossover is hugely important and we don't see that enough. You know, in Washington DC, they talk about the revolver, the, revolve, the, the revolving mm. door between the state and the private sector. And there's something very useful about what happens in that cross-pollination of ways of being and doing and so on. So I think we need to sort of leave that stuff. And then I think the last point is one that, um, um, that was made in the previous session, which was a, a really important point um, that Trudy made um, about this echo chamber. And I think reframing leadership in the South African context has to involve not saying things that used to be true and pretending that they're still true. I think there's a way in which we continue to have these conversations about things that aren't true anymore um, and that we don't take into account new information and new data. And that's because we continue to talk uh, in our sectors. And then a number of people have raised it and it's a sort of a pet peeve of mine that we love to talk about resilience as though it's a great thing. I think the myth of resilience is that it's not great and that resilience is a cop-out. I mean, as someone who worked for many years in HIV, and we'd say, oh, communities are resilient. No, communities are poor. They are struggling. They are suffering. Kids are dying in a school because they, they ate food that was, was fed to them. That's not resilience. That's death, right? So I think it's, it's important not to kind of talk in these euphemistic ways about people's capacity to continue to suffer and, and, and be poor and be living in very undignified situations as though that's somehow something great. And so the, I think the challenge for leaders in South Africa is to move beyond this notion of talking about things in the usual ways, the echo chamber stuff, and that we need to sort of rise above the kind of the Sunday paper syndrome. We need to rise above the sort of euphemistic where being, you know, people are resilient or that it's service delivery protests as though somehow that sanitizes what's actually happening. And so to be able to talk in a real way that is both contradictory of power, but is also affirming of power where it's operating in the right kind of ways.